The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. Welcome to this episode of Pit Life Barbecue. Gather around the pit with your hosts, Johnny Mags and Messy Mike. Let's talk barbecue. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Pit Life Barbecue Podcast, where we talk barbecue and everything else around the pit. Uh, today, Johnny Mags is a little backed up with uh, the holiday mail, so it's just a messy mic today. And Ed, yeah, somebody's got to deliver the mail. Oh, exactly. Yeah, he was uh, swamped today. <laughs> he couldn't deal with himself. So, just me and uh, he'll probably. I'd probably say this might happen a couple of times. You know, before uh, January. I think that's a likely scenario. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Tough time to be a mailman. <laughs> <laughs> um, but today on the show, uh, we're going to be talking, um, you know, barbecue pits, fire pits, uh, you know, accessories, cutting boards. So, um, you know, I don't want to take up too much time, uh, but we have Rich Robin from Gator Pit of Texas joining us live. How are you, Rich? Man, I'm doing great, guys. How y'all doing? Doing good. Doing good. Thank y'all for having me on the show. No, not a problem. Not a problem. I uh, I was checking out your website. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, you got quite the accolades going with uh, your smokers being seen on TV. Yes, sir. We've been on a lot of the major networks, History Channel, Discovery Channel, Destination America, Food TV, Food Network, you name it. We've probably been there. Wow. Wow. And it's a, it's a family-owned business out of Houston. Correct. Um, when did you start the, the company? I started uh, around 1991. And I uh, incorporated it uh, to an actual Gator Pit, of, uh, Gator Pit name uh, in around 95, and then reincorporated it to Gator Pit of Texas in 2002. And we've been Gator Pit of Texas since 2002. That is awesome. Now, why did you, why did you change it to Gator Pit of Texas and not just with the Gator Pits? Uh, my CPA. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> That's an easy decision. <laughs> well, well, we kept the company kept growing, right? So as you grow uh, financially and, and, and everything else that comes with it, you look at, uh, I'm just going to be honest, you look at tax liabilities and, and civil liabilities and other things. And, and uh, my CPA said we need to uh, do a limited partnership. And uh, so we went from an LLC to an LP being a limited partnership. And uh, it was just a better structure for the company as the company back then was growing and, and getting bigger and, and, and gaining more revenue. And, uh, you know, that's what you pay those guys for, right? Mm-hmm. Watch your back. And, and, and that's what they're paid for, CPAs and lawyers, man. Nice. Now, did you now did you always start with, um, you know, making pits right away? Or were you a fabricator doing other stuff and you just caught your I, eye? I start- I started welding in high school in Future Farmers of America, FFA, when mm-hmm. I was 14 years old. And back then, you know, you built, they gave you projects or they gave you a list of things you could do for a grade. And, and barbecue pit was what I chose. Uh, uh, me and another friend of mine back in high school, and we teamed up and we built built a grill back then. Mm-hmm. And for a grade, you know, to, for the year. And uh, it was born, man. I even had my birdhouse stack on it back when I was 14 years old that I'm known for, you know, kind of my signature stack. So back in when I was 14 years old, I was building grills and, and putting birdhouse stacks on them back then. Wow. And uh, uh, for four years, I did that while I was in high school and then graduated, went to college. Uh, my degrees in legal studies, I moved to Houston to go to uh, South Texas School of Law. I chose not to go to school, uh, to law school mm-hmm. and uh, opened up Gator Pit of Texas uh, in the 90s. And here we are, man. That's that's my story. Wow. I went, went back to doing what my passion was because I love the welding. I love the fabrication. And I love making uh, an end product from raw steel, raw materials. And uh, being a lawyer wasn't my cup of tea. I realized <laughs> that uh, when I was actually going, going to start, start law school. Mm-hmm. And uh, I told my wife and my family, I said, you know what? We're opening up a welding shop. <laughs> nice. Well, you chose the right path. <laughs> I, don't, I have no regrets. Now, do you, no regrets. do you still have the smoker that you built in high school? No, I do not. I, I honestly, I don't know where it is. I really don't. My mother had it for years, uh, and I have photos of it, but I, I honestly do not know where, what happened. To, I don't know where it is. I don't know. Hmm. Somebody somewhere has still got it, though, or cooking on it, I know, because that thing was a beast. Wow. Hopefully it pops up down the road. 
<laughs> I wish I did have it. <laughs> it probably will. Um, now let's so let's talk about uh, your company. Um, you don't just do you know reverse flow. You just don't do cabinet smokers, um, tailgate grills where you can you know hook to the back of your tailgate. Um, you also do pellet smokers. You ba- everything. Uh, man, I, I told myself for years I was never going to do a pellet grill, and uh, just my personal reasons. I've, I'm known for my my, my badass offset stick burners. Mm-hmm that I established my reputation on and you know, there's a demand for it. And I had customers that had my pits who asked me if I was ever going to build a pellet grill and, and the customer demand, demand dictated that I come up with a pellet grill design. And I did that a few years back, uh, researched who I wanted to, to get my hoppers from. And, uh, uh, I found the guy being smoke daddy and, and I used their hoppers. They've been great. I have no regrets. Their quality, uh, and I attached them to what, what I was already doing, what I've been doing for almost 30 years. And that was building thick, heavy duty, iron horse, work horse cookers that people love with the quality and designed it to where we could attach the, the hoppers to the side. And, and the Gator Pit pellet grills were born. And I started out with one design. And I think now we have at least six different models that you can choose from. Mm-hmm. And I've got a new one that just came out called the Meat Slinger. It's, it's another commercial size cooker. Uh, it was designed uh, specifically, the original design was going to the back of concession trailers and our food trucks. Uh, and I have one in the back of my concession trailer. It works great. It holds about 15 briskets. It holds a lot of meat. Wow. And, and we can make it bigger if somebody needs it bigger. And it, it is a pellet grill. Uh, you can literally put your food on it at, in the evening, like in my case. If I'm catering on a Saturday, I bring my trailer home from work on Friday afternoon. I put my food in it. I set my thermostat to 225, fill my 35 pound hopper up and I go to bed and I wake up at five, six o'clock in the morning and everything's still going and pretty much cooked. I put ribs on it at that time. I put chickens on it. Yep. And by 11 o'clock, man, wherever I'm going to cater or whoever I'm dropping off with is done. And I slept all night. Wow. It is, it is a great catering machine is, 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 is what I call it. Wow. And it's commercial unit. Wow. Okay. It's now, commercial unit. now, thirty-five yes. pound hopper. How many, how many cooks do you get? You know, will you get out of that? I've tested it at two hundred twenty-five degrees, and I got thirty-two hours of burn time out of it. Okay. It will, it will run all night. You have no problems. Uh, I've got videos on my YouTube channel. If you go to my Gator Pit YouTube channel, you'll see videos of me testing that hopper uh, in, in a twenty-four hour period. And in twenty-four hours, I, I didn't even get uh, uh, three quarters through the hopper. Wow. There is something to be said about pellet smokers. <laughs> yeah, and you know, it was it's that thick steel, it's that thick quarter inch steel that 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 retains the heat, right? So the mm-hmm. hopper's not having to run continuously like they're doing with thinner models uh, that that aren't retaining the heat, and that's where you get your your longer burn times from is the thicker steel, you know, along with some good design inside, internal designs. Uh, mm-hmm. They're great pits, they really are. You know, there, there's there's people that 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 uh, there's a market that just wants the pellet grills, and there's like a lot of my customers who have my big badass offset stick burners, but there's times that they want to barbecue and just don't have the time to to sit there for the day or the night and run the pit, right? Right. Run the exactly. Pit yep. Every hour and a half, two hours, right? You got to feed it. It's not going to feed itself. Mm-hmm. But they still want barbecue, and guess what? They add that pellet grill to their Gator Pit arsenal. And now they've got that that smoked meat that they can have and go to the ball games and come back and, and they've got the barbecue sitting there waiting on them. Wow. Now, do you, do you make a um, pellet that goes in the back of a tailgate? I do not. I okay. don't have one of those yet. Okay. I don't. Uh, the only reason I have, and I've been asked that question multiple times, is is the only concern I have is the balancing down the highway uh, on the back of the truck mm-hmm. and the electronics and all that that are in there. I don't know if they can handle that. Gotcha. Um, and that's my only concern. Otherwise, yeah, I could throw, I could do it. I could design one, but I, you know, those hoppers, I don't know if those internal components can handle that down the highway. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can put them on trailers because you don't have that bounce on the on a trailer like you do the very right. end of the tailgate. Mm-hmm. A lot of bounce back there. And you you do trailers too, not just barbecue trailers, but you do concession trailers as well. We do, yeah. Well, well yeah, I, I've got. We can, uh, but I prefer to do the actual build out of the trailers. Yeah. So someone can buy the shell uh, of an enclosed trailer with a barbecue porch on the back of it. Mm-hmm. And then we can come in and build that back end out to meet your health departments. Because most health departments are required be, being uh, walled off or screened in, vented out and all that. Correct. And I've, got the, I've got like six or seven different 
gator pit smokers and grills that are designed specifically to go in the back of concession type trailers with the barbecue porches in the rear or the front. So anybody that has a concession trailer and wants to put a gator pit smoker or grill back there, mm-hmm. you've got the designs to do it. And we do the complete install start to finish. Okay. Perfect. I might have to talk to you then. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Now do you, now do you do any, um, um, like, uh, what am I trying to think? Water smokers or no, everything's just All stick right, burners. So, yeah, pellets. Well, I've got, uh, <laughs> excuse me. I've got, Two models, that one's called the Rebel, one's called the Dual Stacker. Mm-hmm. They do come standard with water pans there, half-inch thick water pans in there uh, that, that holds up to about five gallons of water. And they're designed to cook with or without water. I had one in my house for about three years. Uh, I never put the water in it. I, I, I used it strictly as like an offset firebox because the internal design is such that it functions like an offset firebox. Where you've got your horizontal here and then your firebox off to the side, right? Yep. So my cabinet smoker, that vertical box, the internal uh, design is to cook like an offset. So I, I wound up not putting water in mine. Some customers do. You know, a lot of the uh, weather at, you know, dry, dry climate, you know, they may put water in there. Uh, but believe it or not, a lot of people don't know this. Most of my offset smokers have the ability to put water in them. In fact, all of them have the ability to put water in them. It's just, it's just a matter of how you do it. Mm-hmm. But most of my cookers are sealed in the bottoms to where you can get two to three inches of water in them. Okay, yeah. A lot, yeah. Of, people don't, a lot of people don't know that about Gator Pit because we don't advertise them as water smokers. Uh. But they do have the ability to pour, to put water in them. Okay, yeah, because there's a channel. Um, I mean, I have a Meadow Creek um, TS250. I bought it, you know, years and years ago. Uh, and there is there is a channel in the bottom. Yeah. That, you yeah. know, you could fill up with water if you wanted to, yep. but I've, you know, I've really just taken a, a aluminum pan and just putting it on the rack and just taking up some rack space. And, and you know what? You can do the same thing uh, by putting a, like a half full pan, filling it up with water and putting that down in the belly of any of our pits. Okay. Right next to the firebox side, but not too close so you don't block the airflow, right? But yep. you can do the thing. Now that you can do on any of our cookers. And to be honest, that's easy. That's the easiest way to do it because you got to clean it up, right? So when you're putting water in your smoker, somebody's that water's got to go somewhere, right? Right. And of course, all of our all of our pits have drains on them, mm-hmm. uh, whether they're a threaded cap that you remove or a ball valve. They all have drains on there. So you know, if you got to drain that water in a in a bucket out of your pit, if you just put it in a fall pan and set it, you know, a few inches off that firebox wall where that heat's coming in, mm-hmm. now you just have to clean it and throw that fall pan away. That's really the easiest way to do it. But most of my gator pits, you can fill up with some water, two or three inches of water, and without a doubt, and there's a drain to drain it out. All right. All right. And uh, so also, um, and we're going to talk about, you know, the, the cutting board and stuff like that as well. Um, but so I see that, you know, you've built a, the, what, the space shuttle smoker, you know, yes. for, I believe for the King of the Grill, a, a TV show. Um, right. Right. What are some of the other, you know, crazy modifications or, you know, smokers that you've built, um, you know, for people, for, you know, for their specs? Oh, man, I, I did <laughs> I think the weirdest thing I ever did or craziest thing I did, it was, wasn't, it wasn't a big pit, but this, this guy, y'all going to laugh when I say this, this guy came to me and asked me if I could build a tailgate pit that looked like a donkey. <laughs> that looked like a what? A donkey. Heard, heard a, donkey. a donkey. Wow. He asked me if I could build a tailgating pit that looked like a donkey. And I told him, yes, I could. Mm-hmm. And we did. And, and there's pictures of it on social media. Uh, but it is a tailgating pit that you plug in the back of your truck. And it looks like a donkey and uh, it smokes out the tail. <laughs> oh, that is awesome. Uh, that is it, awesome. It's got, the, it's got the legs. It's got the ears, the head. It's got, it looks like a donkey, man. Uh, oh, that's sure. probably the weirdest thing that, that I had to do. That, that makes me laugh. Like I have now every time I think of it. Uh, we built a, a cooker for uh, King Aerospace up in uh, North Texas and, and, or Oklahoma. Uh, and, uh, it, it, it had a, uh, a smokestack that was uh, six to seven feet wide, or a Boeing 747 smokestack. That, it looked like a Boeing 747, and you'll see it on social media as well. And the guy that called me, uh, Jerry King's the owner of, of King Aerospace, he called me and asked me if uh, I could build a, a pit with a smokestack that looked like a Boeing 747 that, that actually vented out the four engines on the wings, right? <laughs> you shouldn't me. That is wow. <laughs> it's cool. I said, without a doubt. And he said, well, you're pretty, pretty quick to do that. Have you ever done that before? And I said, do you know of anybody that's ever built <laughs> a Boeing 747 smokestack that smokes out the engines on the wings? He goes, 
no. I said, well, I haven't either, but I can do it. <laughs> and he said, all right, let's do it. And we did it. And it, it, there's a video of it uh, on my YouTube channel where you see it. And the pit itself is like 25 feet long. It's a big pit, uh, eight feet wide, 25 feet long, nine feet tall. And you got this big Boeing 747 spoke stack up there with a six inch or six foot wingspan. It weighed, uh, the stack itself weighed right at a thousand pounds. <laughs> Holy uh, crap. It's big, man. Uh, the fuselage and all that from, from nose to tail was uh, five and a half feet long. And then the wingspan was right at six feet. Uh, wow. it, it's, big, it's big, painted white and had the four engines on, on the on two on the, each of the wings and, and when you fired it up it, it just had a trail of smoke coming out those those four engines man it was cool oh that is awesome all right rich i gotta take a commercial we'll be right back and uh we'll keep talking you got it attention cigar smokers or even friends of a cigar smoker If you're looking to relax with a nice premium cigar or looking for a great gift for a cigar smoker, this is the gift that keeps on giving. Our friends at TwoGuysCigars.com have created the Cigar of the Month Club. For just $24.99 per month, you or your friend will receive four different premium handmade cigars every month. And shipping and handling is included. Go to TwoGuysCigars.com. That's the number two, guyscigars.com, and go to the Cigar of the Month Club. You can stop anytime because there's no contract, but you won't because this is a tremendous deal for our listeners. Go to twoguyscigars.com. That's the number two, guyscigars.com, and click the Cigar of the Month Club. At the same time, if you want to learn about the cigars you receive each month, you can smoke along with them on their own podcast called The Cigar Authority. Sit back, relax, and enjoy a nice premium cigar from our friends at twoguyscigars.com. And we're back. Rich, you still there? Yep. Excellent. I'm here, man. Excellent. And uh, also, um, before we continue, uh, thank you for your service. Um, I saw you in your email. You are sergeant in the Army. Um, yes, sir. So just wanted to say that to you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Um so what would, you know, you make all these pits. What is your favorite pit one to make and favorite pit one to actually use? Um, I like, all right, size-wise, I like my, my 2448 uh, smoker. Mm-hmm. It's an offset stick burner. To me, for the house, it is the Ferrari of pits, man, the cook-on for the house. Uh, my my recommendation to any of my customers or anybody buying a pit, whether it's mine or somebody else's, is if you can swing it into budget, go with a 24 diameter size, man. Don't be don't be scared of the, the larger size. They're actually easier to cook on. Hundred uh, uh, percent. And and you know, the main reason is because you're not so confined with with food and or fire and heat. Um, so for the backyard for my house is a 2448 size with an offset stick burner is by far my favorite. Mm-hmm. Uh, in fact, I have one on my website called the Riches Edition. That's how how much I liked it. I actually named one Riches Edition because it, people saw me cooking on it in my house, and so many people loved it and wanted it. So we just put it as a model on my website. Uh, and as far as trailers, uh, mobiles, man, I, I've got to go with my Falcon. Uh, I've got one. I cooked on it this past weekend. Uh, it is. It's a, it's not too small. It's not too big. I can still uh, unhook it off my truck. I can still roll around the driveway by myself on, you know, on my concrete drive. It's not so large. I can't move it uh, by myself and roll it around wherever I need it or move it, depending on the wind blowing, you know, and how it's blowing, I can move it around. Uh, so it's, 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 you can handle it. One man can handle it easily and it, it cooks a lot of meat. Uh, you can fire it up and cook two briskets or you can fire it up and cook 12. Uh, it doesn't use any more wood one way or the other. Uh, it, it just is smooth running mobile. Uh, hook it up and take it wherever you want, you know, and it, it's small enough to fit in, 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 at your house, in your driveway. It'll fit in your garage. Uh, so you don't have to worry about where am I going to park this thing, wherever I'm going, tailgating or wherever I'm going. You can you can get there. It's, it's very easy. Mm-hmm. So that's my two favorite pits, my 2448 size and my 24 by 72 three-door uh, mobile Falcon size. Okay. Now, and, and you make, and um, so – uh, you make fire pits, but they're fire pits to cook on, correct? Correct, correct. They're they're grills slash fire pit. So mm-hmm. you can you can they're quarter stick. They're heavy. I don't make the fancy kind that you see. 
uh, when you get to the, the box stores, you know, and, and they have all the little artwork cut out into them and all that, I make iron horse cookers, uh, yep. uh, fire pits. So these are fire pits that you're going to put at your backyard and they're going to be there 15 years from now. I've got one that's back there almost 20 years. Uh, I, the only thing I've ever had to put into it was a new fire grate itself. The pit itself is, there's nothing wrong with it. Mm -hmm. And it just sits outside and gets rained on, right? But it's been there forever. Uh, and, and, and they've got a pivoting uh, uh, grate on top that you can rotate around. You have to remove your food tray if you're cooking. So if you got meat on it, you don't have to take your grate off to add more wood or charcoal to it while you're cooking. You just swing that food grate around and then put your log in there, put you some more charcoal if you're using charcoal, and then swing it back over your fire. And it's removable. So if you are wanting to use it just as a fire pit or if you're through cooking and mm -hmm. you just want to take your grate off and now you're just ready to sit around the fire, have some cold beverage and, and, and enjoy what you're eating, you take that top uh, meat rack off and now you've got your round fire pit. Uh, they're, they're neat pits. They're popular. We sell a lot of them. I, uh, I think we ship three or four out today. Uh, oh. uh, they're popular pits. They're not. They're not overly priced, and they're they're a fire pit that you're not going to buy. You're not going to buy another one. Mm -hmm. uh, most fire pits are. You know, I'm just going to say you buy them at Walmart, Home Depot. Those thin 20, 22 gauge, 24 gauge type uh, 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 fire pits that come from China or wherever else they're coming from. If you use them on a regular basis, they're about six months. You're buying another one. Oh yeah! After they, about a week, they last, rusted. <laughs> they only they only last about six months. They are they are disposable cookers, man. But you know, you pay a hundred bucks for them, right? Mm -hmm. They're they're not going to last fifteen years. You, it's just not going to happen. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! You those get what you, get what you paid for. You know. Get what now, you pay for. Now, do those come in different sizes as well, or do you just have one they, size for that? They come in different sizes. You get a you get a twenty inch size, and you get a twenty four inch size, and the cost difference is only a few bucks from the twenty being the small one to the larger twenty four. If you're wanting one that uh, that you can take around with you, then get the 20 inch because the 24 is really heavy. Uh, these things weigh the 24 probably weighs in about 200 pounds, so it's not something you want to be picking up and moving around from your truck to the, you know. It's going to be something you want to put it and leave it right. If you want something that's going to be more mobile, then go with the smaller size. That one's that one you can manhandle by yourself by grabbing the handles on it and picking it up and throwing it in your truck. The 24 is going to be be a little little more work to do that. Uh, but they're great. Again, they're great fire pits, man. And they're, they're, they're made to last for 15, 20 years, if not longer. I mean, they're, they're, they're to stay. Nice. Um, and kind of, you, I mean, you sell basically everything that's meant to last your smokers, your fire pits. Uh, I mean, you hooked up with, um, Ian from custom cutting boards. Um, yes. and you know, that cutting board is just, it's fantastic. I love it. Oh, I, I, it stayed right now. It stays on my counter. Got it sitting right here. <laughs> nice. My wife's like, when are you going to take that off the counter? I'm like, uh, till I need it outside next? <laughs> yep. I had a, I had uh, friends of mine over. I cooked this past uh, Saturday, and I had two friends, two neighbors over, and they came by, and they hadn't seen my cutting boards, and it was sitting on the, the island in my kitchen, right? And I got a black granite island. Of course, this thing's white with black trim, right? Oh. Y'all can probably see now. Yep. And she's like, that is a nicest cutting board i've ever seen she goes that's one i would actually just leave sitting out on my countertop yeah it's sleek yeah, it's 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 a fine cutting board it's it's attractive it's pretty it's you know you don't look at it and go why are you cutting birds sitting there you're using it no it's decorative yep yep and, you, and, the and, countertop. and these are on um these are on your online store right now you um, can go to gigapit.net right now and go to my online store click the the top right corner, there's a red tab that says store. Mm -hmm. Click on that, and it brings my products up. And you'll see this there uh, with several photos of me using it with food on it and vegetables on it cut up. And uh, enter the discount code of Gator, G-A-T-O-R, and you'll get 10% off uh, the regular price. And uh, we've got them in stock, ready to go. Ian stopped by my shop today and dropped off a, a supply of them. I've got them ready to go. Uh, I'm, I'm not kidding. We, we took uh, five orders just Saturday and Sunday on these boards, which you, we shipped those out. Uh, they went out yesterday. And I've got more orders now, So and I'm fixing to get more orders now after this, I know. So nice. Ian's, already, Ian's already ramped up production to, to be able to, to supply us with these because we've got orders day, daily coming in. Literally, they're coming in daily on these boards. And you just got the two colors right now, or just white? You got the white and the green. I, I'm only offering. I only offer the white and the black. Now, white Ian, and the black. Okay. Ian, Ian, if you want different colors, yeah. then contact Ian. You mentioned his company name and, and I think his site. So if you want custom anything custom that's not this, 
uh, then you need to contact the manufacturer direct, being Ian. Yep. And then and then he can tell you what he's got available in those colors. And he does have multiple colors and okay. multiple trims. Mm-hmm. And he's got different sizes, right? Yes. So if you want something smaller than this, I'm offering this one size and one color uh, to my basically my customers uh, mm-hmm. because what what I'm getting is pretty much everybody that's buying a barbecue bit from me. Guess what? Everybody I'm bored. bored. I'm on board. Ship it with my bit. Oh yeah. Happened today to a guy going to. Uh, Tennessee. Uh, I called him and said, "Hey, we're, we're no, he's going to Georgia." I said, uh, "We're shipping your pit today. Here's your tracking number." I said, "He goes, have they picked it up?" And I said, "No, not yet. They have until four o'clock to pick it up." He says, "Get me a cutting board if it's not too late and put it in with my shipment. I want a board." Nice. We wrapped it up, threw it in his pallet, and, and he's got his board. And that's that's what's happening with these boards right now. Is of course word spreading that we've got them. Mm-hmm. But you know, I offer this size because people that are buying these for me, being a, a pit manufacturer and, and maker of cookers is they need this size board to be able to cook or, or cut and trim and prep meat, right? 100%. And big meat. Yep. Racks of ribs, right? They're that long. Yep. The briskets, you know, the peanut pounds, they're big pieces of meat. Well, not only the prepping part of it, but after you cook it, you need somewhere to cut it and slice it and chop it, right? This board, you can look at my, 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 my uh, pictures that I posted. I've got briskets and, and, and cuts of meat on here, but you can, I, I did a 15 pound brisket this past Saturday and put it on this board, and I sliced up the point, or the sliced up the flat, and I came in on the same, never even took moved meat around, left it all in there, mm-hmm. and came back and chopped the rest of it up, and kept everything on the board, and still had plenty of room. It's got that nice grease trough around it that catches the juices as you're, as, you know, if you've gotten juicy meat, which, you know, my, my briskets are juicy, right? Hopefully everybody's got juicy meat that's barbecue. has <laughs> got juicy meat, right? You know, it, it captures most of that because it's got a real deep, like a quarter inch deep trough, maybe yes. even three eighths deep. It's pretty deep, man. I mean, I'm feeling it now. To, you know, if you put a tape in there, I bet you're going to be anywhere between a quarter to three eighths deep. I so think it catches right. a lot of those juices that don't spill on your countertop and or on your floor. Yep. Oh yeah, and uh, I actually just thought of this. Um, that would be a fantastic board to even make for over the sinks. Yes. Yes. Um, you know, you like a commercial three base sink. Yeah. You know, this thing will fit on that. Yeah, mm-hmm. without a doubt. It, it's great for that, which nice. I have in my concession trailer. And um, so you not only you don't only carry cutting board, um, but you also in your on- online store, you have, um, I mean, you have pit handles, you know, the spiral yeah. handles. Um, you have uh, pokers. You have fire baskets. Um, yes. You have, uh, I think, uh, Riley's, um, Riley's some sauces and rubs. Riley's rubs. Yes, I had Riley rubs on there. Uh, I've got uh, ball valves. I've got... Yep. Uh, ash rakes and fire pokers. I've got the stainless steel cool touch handles, which we sell a lot of people. A lot of people build their own pits, right? They're, mm-hmm. they're, they want to build their own pit for their, their house or their barbecue team, whatever they're doing. We sell the handles for those. Uh, they can buy them direct from us. We can ship them. So if you're, we've got the gauges. So if you're, you know, guys are building their own pits, uh, come on, call me, email me, whatever. You can buy the, a lot of those parts for them. Uh, we even sell the pipe. Somebody wants to buy a pipe to build their own pit. I've got a yard full of pipe. We'll cut it to size, man. Nice. Uh, if it's, re- you know, we, I do everything that's related to barbecue pits. Yeah. We sell wood. <laughs> yep. I've got firewood. I mean, if it's related to barbecue, I got it. I got, I got a lot of rubs coming out called Gator Pit of Texas Barbecue Rubs. I've got that coming out uh, the end of next week. We should have uh, inventory. Nice. I've got uh, brisket blend, chicken uh, uh, blend or rubs. I've got uh, uh, steak seasoning. I've got uh, uh, brisket ribs. Uh, chicken, steak, and I got a Cajun all season, like for gumbos and stews. So I'll have all five of those coming out. Uh, Gator Pit branded rubs will all be out uh, by the end of next week. Oh, all I'm waiting on right now is my labels, uh, which we approved the labels today. So they'll be printing those. They said it takes three days to print. I should have by Monday, I mean, getting into the holidays. I should have those labels by Monday. By, by Friday, I should have uh, I ordered two cases of each of the rubs. I should have 120 models by Friday. Nice, perfect, just in time for the holidays. Yeah. Just yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So we got a lot. We got a lot of things going on with the boards, the seasonings, and 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 the new pit models, the new pellet grills that I've added to my, my lineup, my Gator Pit lineup on my website, and 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 of course, you know what I'm known for, where my my name and reputation uh, came about was we're custom, right? We're one of the few guys that are still truly custom. Uh, so if there's something that you want that you don't see on my website, mm-hmm. but you may see something that's close to what you like, use that as a basis and let us design exactly what you want to meet your wants and your needs. 
uh, are. You got some specs you send to us. I'll look at them, and if it's something we can uh, can do, or I will say this, want to do, because mm-hmm. we don't do everything everybody wants, uh, <laughs> we we will price it. I'll, I'll tell you a price, give you a lead time on it. We've got a, we got a hell of a waiting list right now for our products. Okay. Um, when, it, when, it come, when it comes to the cookers, um, so uh, yeah, I mean we're 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 busy. Uh, we're still still growing, man. I mean, it's thirty almost thirty years into it, and I'm still growing. That is excellent. And you also have a um, barbecue school as well. Yes. I've got barbecue classes. Uh, we, I started the classes about 10 years ago, mm-hmm. so it's nothing new. I've been doing it for about 10 years. I started doing classes with a gentleman by the name of Conrad Haskins, who's mm-hmm. since passed away, uh, rest his soul. Uh, but Conrad was a hell of a pit master, and he held a hell of a class. And I used to host him at my shop, and that's how I got into him. Well, then when he passed away, people – knew our relationship and knew our connection with the classes, right? They, they associated me with, with the cooking classes and him and wanted to know if the cooking classes were to continue. And I had no plans of doing it, but it's like my pellet grills. You know, you get requests and demands for it. You get enough of it. And it's like, I'll start hosting, yep. I'll start doing classes and I'll come up with a Gator Pit class. And we came up with a plan, uh, me and Kirk and, and, and Kevin Riley with CRC Rubs. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the three of us uh, do the classes and, even that's growing. I'm now doing product classes. I had a product class just two weeks ago. A father and son came in from Bosnia, flew in from Bosnia to have a one day private one on one class with me and Kurt. And uh, it started at eight in the morning and ended at five o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, it was great. And and uh, we're going to start offering more private classes. One day from Bosnia. That is insane. They flew Good in from for Bosnia for a one-day cooking class with us, yes. Now, how often do you hold um, classes? <clears throat> the the group classes are three times a year. Mm-hmm. Our next class, I believe we have scheduled for March 21st. If you go to uh, GatorPitBBQSchool.com, which is my class website, uh, you'll, you'll get that next class. It'll, it'll show the classes on there, and you can register online. Uh, we even have links in there for hotels around us that you get discounts at, too, if you attend our class. Um, or you can just go to my main site at GatorPit.net. There's a link there to the barbecue school site. Uh, but we do those three times a year, the group classes three times a year. Uh, and the private classes are when you need, for the most part, if, we, if we're available to, and we go to your house. I've got that concession trailer. If, if you know, we can haul it on site, we, we can do it for companies, for, for group employee uh, 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 events. Uh, not catering, but, you know, I've got, I've got, Companies that, that have contacted us to go to their, their place of business and they will pay to have a cooking class for their employees. Oh. So again, this this every everything I've gotten into with barbecue is just expands. Nice. And it takes you in directions you never thought of, you know. And, and here I am now selling cutting boards and doing cooking classes <laughs> and now I'm doing private classes. Oh. I got pellet grills that I swore I never would do. So <laughs> Awesome. Man, well, what can I say, man? It's, it's God's blessed me with barbecue. Awesome. Well, good for you, Richie. I love talking to you today. Um, where can so uh, you have social media? You have Facebook, um, Instagram. Where can people find you on on social sites? If you go to my GatorPit.net, my main website, right? GatorPit.net. It has links to most of my other social media sites. But yeah, Instagram, Pinterest, LinkedIn, uh, 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 YouTube, YouTube channel. I have over four hundred videos on YouTube. So wow. if you go to my YouTube channel, you'll see there's over 400 videos there. I mean, you could be there for probably weeks going through my videos and watching cooking videos and watching pit builds and, and, and watching various custom designs we've done. Uh, so that, that's kind of a cool place to go, go check out some, some cool stuff for you if you're into barbecue pits. Uh, and, of course, Facebook. I've got like four or five Facebook pages. Uh, there's a Gator Pit fan page that one of my, my customers created. Uh, uh so, man, I'm all over social media. If you just Google Gator Pit, you'll find me, man. I'm, I'm everywhere. Nice. Well, guys, go find him. Um, you know, great guy. He's got a ton of barbecue knowledge. Um, but, you know, Rich, thank you very much. Um, that is going to do it for today's episode of the Pit Life Barbecue Podcast. You can check us out on YouTube, Stitcher, Spotify, iTunes, all the podcast uh stations and um you know hit the subscribe button share uh you know we again we just keep growing hopefully johnny will uh you know be here next week but you know we understand it gets busy around the holiday season and uh until next time and i apologize i think 
I didn't keep up with any comments today. I don't even see any comments. <laughs> I don't have Facebook up. Um, I didn't want my phone going off today. So, uh, but until next week, um, keep the smoke rolling. Have a good and happy Thanksgiving. I get y'all. Thank y'all. Opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.